back at this rally, everyone. The markets are sharply higher on the heels of last night's post-election freefall. You know, overnight, the markets were really tumbling. We saw it in the futures market. In fact, at one point, Dow futures were down more than 860 points. Check out the reversal. I had so many investors messaging me last night saying this is actually a buying opportunity because they like the policy ideas that Donald Trump is putting forward. And what do you know? Uh, you're looking at a big rally here today. So that expected big, huge, massive sell-off, it didn't happen. Big rally also on the heels of Clinton's concession speech as people breathe a sigh of relief and say, okay, there's not going to be any kind of crazy uh, litigation involved in this election. She has conceded and everyone is moving on and moving forward. Joining me right now, Recon Capital Partner CIO Kevin Kelly, Kingsview Asset Management CIO Scott Martin, and Countdown to the Closing Bell anchor Liz Clayman, who's there on the floor of the Stock Exchange. And Liz, what are those guys telling you right now? Uh, I, this is this is really interesting, isn't it, Trish? Because overnight, I'm sure you got the same calls. What's going to happen to my 401k? The futures are down 800 points. Well, it sure is interesting. Given a few hours to absorb all of the news, the markets are fine right now. We are looking at a gain of 229 points for the Dow Jones Industrials. More importantly, we are now less than 100 points away from an all-time point close here at 18,562, all-time high, 18,636, uh, rather. So we're, we're seeing real gains here in most sectors of health care, financials. Financials are hitting nine-month highs right now, Trish. Air is coming out of gold. Of course, overnight, gold spiked about 50 bucks, so all the gold bugs got excited. But uh, right now, things seem to be very positive, but I've been talking to traders here. They're saying it just looks a little too cute and buttoned up. You never know. Just, well, yeah, just sure. You never know. But right. Kevin, I, you know, he came out, he gave really a great speech last night. It, it was a, a victorious speech, but it was also a, a speech that, that had gravitas. He talked about the need to bring the country together. He's recognizing that that is important. You know, the market had been way down. It started to climb back a little bit in the futures market after he spoke. Uh, and it seems as though people had the chance to sleep on it. They woke up and said, okay, today is a new day. And there are new opportunities. And if you do things like lessen regulation and cut taxes, shouldn't that benefit corporate America? Shouldn't that benefit economy, uh, the economy? And shouldn't that benefit Americans in the way of jobs? Yeah, I mean, you're hitting the nail on the head. This was really a referendum on fiscal policies and reforms, and we're starting to see and that. And lack play. of, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've basically done nothing and left it entirely up to Janet Yellen and company, but go ahead. Correct, yeah. And, and what's interesting to note is that Donald Trump went on the stump, and his economic policy was at the forefront throughout his entire campaign, and that's why you're seeing companies rewar being rewarded today, because he's talked about a 10% repatriation of taxes. That that's $2.7 trillion that can come over here and be used for mergers, M&As, buybacks. It's going to help capital and labor investment. It's going to be really good. It can Look also at the be used sector. for factories yeah, exactly. and the creation of new jobs. I mean, the idea, Scott, that we leave all this money overseas to benefit other people's economies instead of bringing it back, I mean, that doesn't make any economic sense. Because of the prohibitive tax policies of the recent and now bye bye administration, which is exactly what Donald Trump understands. He's got to encourage businesses. He's got to encourage consumers to be comfortable, go out and take risk, which is exactly what we saw with the voters and what they wanted to say and what the markets are saying is that risk is back on, business development is back on, America is back in business because Trump's in the White House. Wow. Uh, Liz, when you're looking at some of the sectors, you mentioned financial stocks are doing well. What about pharma, for example, because uh, Obamacare, oh. of course, is going to be very much in focus right. as he gets into office. Uh, pharma's actually skyrocketing for a slightly different reason. Hillary Clinton had said if she became president, President, she would put extreme price controls onto certain drugs that are very expensive for the consumer. Um, and, and I'm not sure Donald Trump is going to do the opposite, but the market certainly believes mm -hmm. this. So you have all of these names spiking right now. Uh, who knows? Donald Trump has also struck a very conciliatory tone toward people who, who do get the short end of the societal stick, don't have a lot of money for drugs. So I'm not sure pharma's in the clear, but we should also mention yeah, that's, that's a good point. Are, healthcare by, stocks are weak right the, now. The healthcare because, stocks yeah. doing very well as, yeah. as well. I mean, the, the challenge for them, of course, has been in this Obamacare environment that they, they just can't 
uh, compete anymore, and it's causing premiums to skyrocket and it, so many health insurers to get out of the business. Bi of biotech, biotech is up pretty. Biotech is up pretty significantly today. Yeah. Look at Celgene. So that's actually what's really leading the healthcare because it used to trade at a premium, but when all this reform was came out from Senator hey. Warren, Senator Sanders, they got crushed. Now they're financials trading back okay, to Kevin. Got, financials as well. Financials as well. Let, let me just let me go to you, Scott, and ask something because you know the media got it all wrong. The mainstream media that just said this guy has no chance in H E double L. And it, it almost felt as though the market was getting it a little bit wrong, too. I mean, there you, you see last night the way the futures were reacting. Um, but, you know, in, in many ways, I guess the market reacts more quickly. And, and, and I mean, how do you interpret this, basically, that we're up 250 what a difference eight when hours they thought makes, he, he wouldn't uh, succeed? I'll tell you, it's, it's a faster reaction or faster recovery even than Brexit, which <laughs> took a couple of days to sort out. But look at financials and some of the things that have happened as Elizabeth Warren fades into the background here. I mean, there's so many things exciting going on in the market that the market's telling you as it looks forward into what Trump is going to bring this economy that should get your money involved in stocks here because we have a clear path finally. Wow. All right. Well, thank you so much to the whole team. Kevin Scott and